You guys have been asking me, please do a video on thiamidol. So let's get into it. Fun fact, like three, almost four years ago, I feel, uh, I bought several skincare products with thiamidol, tried them out with the intention of making a video on it. The products were horrible, uh, could not stand using them gave me a headache, irritated my skin. And so I just kind of shoved them to the side, got caught up with other things, and here we are. Three or four years later, I was in the process of moving, came across these bottles and thought, oh, I need to make that video. What the heck is thiamidol? Anyway, it's an ingredient that is basically owned by Beersdorf, the corporation behind Eucerin, Aquaphor, and many other skincare brands. Thiamidol is something that is found in products marketed as dark spot correctors. It's something that can be helpful for hyperpigmentation, dark spots, even melasma, as well as post-inflammatory hyperpigmentation, which if you're not aware of what that is, basically anytime you have an inflammatory skin condition or process going on in the skin, skin injury, it can heal with a dark mark in people who have deeper skin tones. This is especially an issue. So thiamidol actually shows promise in clinical studies on actual human volunteers, not just cells in a dish, for post-inflammatory hyperpigmentation as well as melasma. Now melasma is sort of another beast. It is more than just hyperpigmentation. There's component of the hormones feeding into it. There's blood vessels that bring in inflammation and it's very, very difficult to treat. Melasma occurs on sun exposed skin. Usually the face characteristically has these sort of angulated borders. So we're not talking like little discrete round oval patches of discoloration, but rather more large rectangular type patches. But the ingredient, suffice it to say, has been studied for post-inflammatory hyperpigmentation and melasma. So whether or not it's going to help anything else who knows because because mic drop this is a cosmetic ingredient so you're not going to find robust clinical trials now there are actually some clinical trials with this ingredient albeit small but uh we don't have a lot of data on it we have more data on it than some other ingredients that pop up but it's still not a ton so thiamidol is actually just a name that Beersdor presumably gave this compound because it's a lot easier to say than what it really is, and that is isobutyl thiazoleal resorcinol. It is, like many pigment correcting ingredients, a tyrosinase inhibitor. When it comes to making pigment, normally and abnormally, you are thinking about the production of melanin. That is the, one of the main pigments in our skin, and that is what is, is playing a role in hyperpigmentation, post-inflammatory hyperpigmentation, melasma. So accumulation of abnormal amounts of melanin, that is what you are trying to intervene on and to prevent those dark patches. And that happens under the guidance of an enzyme called tyrosinase. And so many ingredients that target dark spots, hyperpigmentation, are tyrosinase inhibitors. Now the gold standard for treating hyperpigmentation, it's available by prescription, is hydroquinone. Hydroquinone does in fact inhibit tyrosinase and it has a few other side mechanisms as well. Hydroquinone, while it's a gold standard, it cannot be used long term. You need to take a break from it because it actually can cause rebound worsening hyperpigmentation. It can cause quite a bit of irritation uh, and there are ways around that, but it can be irritating. And again, anything that's irritating to the skin will worsen hyperpigmentation. And there is a concern of a rare condition called pseudoocrinosis. Now, when you are getting hydroquinone under the supervision of your your doctor, you know, they're monitoring for side effects. And so this is less of an issue. Whereas someone who gets high potency, especially hydroquinone from other sources and DIYs it themselves, you know, that's more of a risky situation for adverse events. All that to say, you don't want to necessarily be using hydroquinone every day for the rest of your life. It's not going to be the best approach for controlling the dark spots. It's something that you use to get results and then you wean off of it and bring in somebody else that is better. And so this thiamine at all, a cosmetic ingredient, shows promise. It inhibits tyrosinase. And there's actually a small clinical study of patients who have melasma. They had patients with melasma use thiamidol twice a day, or they had the patients use hydroquinone once a day. And guess what? The thiamidol was just as effective as the hydroquinone. 
so that's great. It, it suggests, again, this is a small study, not like super robust, but it suggests that, yeah, this would be a great option for transitioning someone over to something that could be used long-term safely. Uh, with regards to post-inflammatory hyperpigmentation, remember I told you this is an issue that people who have deeper skin tones tend to deal with. So this particular study looked at patients who have uh, Fitzpatrick phototype 5. If you're not familiar with the Fitzpatrick phototypes, basically it's just a way that we in dermatology use to describe how an individual's skin reacts to ultraviolet radiation. So people who have Fitzpatrick phototype 5 they have a deeper skin tone and they, they don't burn easily. So anyway, the Fitzpatrick phototype 5 patients with post-inflammatory hyperpigmentation, they had them apply thiamidol again twice a day uh, and there was a statistically significant decrease in the hyperpigmentation compared to just vehicle alone. So vehicle alone, um, what that means is basically the cream without the thiamidol. We don't have a lot of information on how it compares to hydroquinone. Yes, there is a one study looking at it in comparison to hydroquinone from melasma, but remember that was small and we just need more information. So it's hard to predict how this will go for any individual or how it compares to any of the other tyrosinase inhibitors out there. Does it do even better if you combine it with something like niacinamide, which isn't a tyrosinase inhibitor, but rather gets in the way of the spread of pigment packets from the melanocyte to the neighboring keratinocytes? Or uh, what about kojic acid? You know, it chelates copper. It's a tyrosinase inhibitor, but it has a very specific way of doing that. Copper is necessary for the function of tyrosinase. As a reminder, I have a video recently all about the warning signs of copper deficiency, and it certainly is a situation where if you don't have enough copper, which is super rare, okay, so don't go self-diagnosing. Oh my gosh, I'm pale. Am I copper deficient? No. Um, Anyway, copper, key for tyrosinase, mess up how the copper gets utilized by tyrosinase. Tyrosinase won't work well. It's essentially an inhibitor. That is how kojic acid works. Well, if you added kojic acid to this um, and, and you kind of get two hits to the tyrosinase slightly different ways, is that going to give you even better results? These are the kinds of things that would be really nice to study, to research, but we don't have the data on that. It's actually here in the U.S. kind of hard to come by skincare products that contain this. I purchased three products from Userin that have thiamidol. They actually have a ton of products with thiamidol, but they are not sold in the US. I bought the anti-pigment day cream SPF 30, the anti-pigment night cream, and the anti-pigment dual serum. Uh, the dual serum also had sodium ascorbyl phosphate. That's a stable form of vitamin C that may help ward off oxidative stress. It would also contribute to inflammation and hyperpigmentation. These products were horrible. When I say they are horrible, I'm specifically talking about the fragrance. And I, you know, I try and hold off on ranting about fragrance in my reviews of things because I know some people are perfectly fine with fragrance. You know, it, while it's a common allergen and irritant, not everyone is bothered by it. People come to these videos wanting information on the products, so they don't just want to hear me complain about the strong scent. But when I tell you, like, it was bad to the point where it was too head. It really gave me a bad headache, and I was like, "No, I, you know, I'm not gonna, I'm not gonna continue these. I'm, there's no way I'm gonna recommend them." And then, like I said, I kind of forgot about them. The sunscreen too. I was really disappointed. Was such a letdown with a strong fragrance because when it comes to dark spots, melasma, you really need to be aggressive with the sun protection. Given this is an ingredient that in the studies was used two, sometimes four times. A day, but for the most part, twice a day. I think having the ingredient in a night cream and then an ing the ingredient in a sunscreen, I think it is a, a nice, I think it's nice to have that because a lot of people, you know, they run into issues layering products with their sunscreen in the morning routine. If you can have a sunscreen with an active ingredient that actually delivers the active ingredient in a meaningful way, that is a concern with sunscreens that have actives is, you know, sunscreens form a film. Is that film limiting penetration? of actives, but if it's not, then it's 
it's great because you just have one product that's your sun protection. It has as well as the thiamidol for the morning routine. And then you have another product for your evening routine that is the moisturizer or the serum, whichever you, whichever one you would want to use. So Ustrin has a lot. They also, as a side note, have a body product with thiamidol. So this is something you might pursue for post-inflammatory hyperpigmentation on the body. Nivea has a product that's not sold here in the US. Um, and I only learned about it like a few weeks ago from one of my followers over on Instagram was like, did you know that this other product exists with thiamidol? I had no idea. It's the L Nivea Luminous 630. They have several products in this line as well. Have not tried them. They do have fragrance. Don't know if it's as headache inducing as the Eucerin one. So I went down the rabbit hole in preparation of this video, trying to find skin, like I was thinking that surely this ingredient must be in something in the US market. Um, the the um, brand that it has so generously decided to include thiamidol, La Prairie. Uh, yeah, they're La Prairie white caviar. Do you, do you know how much this is? $460. $460 for a serum. Uh, they also have, a, I think, a cream as well, but the, the, the serum, the essence, whatever they've named it, $460, yeah. Um, no, move on. There are drugstore products with, you know, pigment targeting ingredients that would be, you know, a lot more reasonable. Nobody should be dropping four or six, unless you want to, you know, you like that kind of stuff. You like the bottle, the packaging, you want the luxe experience, the luxury skincare, by all means. But I am not gonna, let's not pretend that this is something you need in order to improve hyperpigmentation, all right? So let's just get that out of our heads right now. No one needs to be spending that kind of money on a skincare product for dark spots hyperpigmentation. You would be better served seeing a dermatologist getting, uh, you know, cereal peel in, peels or any other number of um, interventions that could be offered. Um, as well as prescription topicals. So I, I say that's a skip. Now, the one product that really, really looked promising um, from a brand I've never heard of, the product is the Bobi Sunscreen Extra Lightning Gel SPF 50, fragrance-free. This is a fragrance-free chemical sunscreen. I had it in my head just seeing it and reading the ingredient list. This looks promising in terms of a consistency of a, a sunscreen that people will like and that it seemed like it was one that was unlikely to be as greasy as some of our American sunscreens. Um, you got to go to Egypt to get this, I guess, because it's an Egyptian. Uh, it comes from Parkville Pharmaceuticals. That's an Egyptian company. So the, anybody who watches me from Egypt, is this a sunscreen? screen that you have, please let us know. That's kind of the end of my personal journey of trial and error with thiamidol. I gave up after my horrible experience with the Eucerin anti-pigment line. Uh, I would be interested to try the Nivea 3630, I'm going to call it 360, Nivea Luminous 630 products, even though they too have fragrance, maybe it's not as bad. Not going to be dropping 460 for the white caviar which does have fragrance as a side note. I'm not gonna be doing that. The other day I did a video all about uh, L'Oreal's Melisil, which is in the La Roche-Posay Mela B3 serum, sunscreen. Of course, they have a face wash version of it as well. Um, how does that compare to this? Who knows? Who knows? If you recall from that video, if you missed it, Melisil is an ingredient that was developed by L'Oreal and it works not uh, like a tyrosinase inhibitor, but rather it gets in the way of the incorporation of the melanin precursors into melanin. In other words, if Beersdorf and L'Oreal wanted to collaborate, which will never happen, to create one product that has both ingredients, that would be something really promising because when it comes to targeting discoloration and dark marks, hitting multiple arms of the pathways that lead to pigment production, that is, that is the name of the game. That's really where you start to get results. Uh, and so I think that'd be really cool. Or even throw in kojic acid in there, chelate copper to really hit that tyrosinase even more. 
I think that'd be great. Leave out the fragrance though. These brands, um, I know I, I personally don't care for fragrance. It is, but when it comes to formulating a dark spot corrector, these companies that have large R&D, right? Like Beersdorf, L'Oreal, uh, they, they put a lot of money into developing these really cool novel ingredients, uh, doing actual clinical studies on them with actual patients who have, in, in this case, you know, the actual clinical disease pathways going on, melasma, post-inflammatory hyperpigmentation, demonstrate efficacy, demonstrate safety, and then they go back to, to the company and they formulate products with this very, very strong fragrance, which is likely to be more irritating to people in the long run. And again, anything that makes the skin irritate, irritated is going to worsen hyperpigmentation. So not to say that it's completely off the table. It's just like, I don't know. I think it's kind of ruining it for a lot of people who are going to be irritated by that and potentially have their hyperpigmentation worsen. I find it interesting that Eucerin has had this ingredient, Beersdorf, excuse me, has had this ingredient for so long, yet hasn't really brought it too many products here in the US. Anyways, guys, that's a wrap up. Speaking of Melisil on the Insulate, uh, I'm gonna link my Melisil video. You can watch that one next if you missed it. But if you guys like this video, go ahead and give it a thumbs up, share it with your friends, and as always, don't forget, sunscreen and subscribe. I'll talk to you guys tomorrow. Bye. Bye.